Rebecca Sharkey, the 2022 election in Fiji saw two former coup leaders squaring off against each other. Uh, the multinational observer group of which you are co-chair reported no significant polling irregularities, but still reflected concerns from 2018 about controls over the media, the lack of laws governing the con conduct of MPs. Could you give us a flavour of how different an election campaign it is in Fiji to one we might experience in Australia? It is quite a different election um, in the sense that when you land in Fiji, you wouldn't necessarily know that there's an election, um, you know, compared to in South Australia where we have, you know, every Stobie poll plastered. Um, but uh, the job of the um, multinational observer group was really just to observe the election. So they were on the ground um, from the day the writs were issued on the 31st of October uh, and attending um, both pre-poll and of course you've got to remember Fiji it has hundreds of islands so getting out to um, you, you know all of those places that have polling stations there were over 2,000 um, polling stations um, and really making sure that um, that the conduct of the election um, was transparent uh, and accessible for all Fijians. Well, how did it feel on the ground? I mean, um, there were reports that it was quite a tense election. I must say, look, there's, there were over 90 observers um, from 16 nations that were part of the multinational observer group and they basically went out to, you know, every part of Fiji. And for those who haven't been to Fiji, um, the main island, um, and in fact, all of the islands uh, tend to be quite mountainous, lots of remote villages right around. So, look, certainly um, I found... Uh, in, in my uh, surveys, and, and we all completed surveys for every single polling booth we attended, um, that the election was, was quite methodical, uh, that, uh, that people lined up peaceably. I mean, you know, it was a really calm and peaceful election. What was the feedback you were getting from average Fijians as you went around the polling booths about the significance of this election? Frank Bainimarama had been in power for 16 years after staging a coup in 2006. Did they regard this election as a really big turning point? Um, look, I, I just got a sense that, that people were looking forward to having their vote. Um, it was a very high turnout, so it was 68%. And, and you know, for a country, uh, and many countries around the world do not have compulsory voting. Um, and given, um, you know, given the remoteness in many locations, um, I thought that that was, um, that was quite a high turnout, um, higher than perhaps what was you know, what was predicted. It, it is a pretty strange election from an Australian perspective in that we've got these two people who've run coups against the government of the day, uh, contesting against each other. How confident are you that that result, when it finally comes, will be accepted and that that period of uh, coups and counter-coups is over for Fiji? So, look, I got a, a real sense of calm on the day of the election and the days after. There, were, uh, there was some anxiety um, both from the political parties and from the general public uh, with uh, not the vote counting because that was a very manual 24-hour-a-day um, expedition following the election, uh, but there was provisional voting on the night um, and the tally of those results was then uploaded into an app and um, there was some challenges around uh, the veracity of that data. The app was taken down. Um, but, look, that was really, I guess, the, what was most concerning to people in Fiji was around um, and, and perhaps getting a greater understanding of, of how the process was because it was, um, it was an entirely manual count. I was there um, at the National count centre um, and then in the tally room after. Um, so it was a very you know, laborious process. As I said, it went for essentially 24 hours um, in the day until um, early on Sunday morning when, when uh, the final result was announced. Um, and uh, I guess it's, you know, it's my hope as a, as a member of parliament uh, and someone who has a great interest in politics that any nation that goes through an election um, has a peaceful transition if there is a change of government. Rebecca Sharkey, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. It's a pleasure.